Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Windows Business Weekly. My name is Russell Smith and I'm going to be talking today about the Windows 10 November 2019 update. So stay tuned. So you may already be aware that Microsoft is preparing to release the second feature update for Windows 10 this year. Now, the May 2009 update or version 1903, of course, has already been available since I think it was already late spring or very early summer by the time it was uh, actually released. And the next update is going to be relatively minor. So while there are a few new features, there's nothing spectacular, uh, nothing really to look forward to in this release in terms of major new things. But there are some improvements uh, to existing features, and it's more focused on performance and reliability, something akin to a traditional service pack. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this update today because it's probably not going to cause you the same kinds of problems that you may have experienced with previous Windows 10 feature updates for various reasons. Now, this update is already available for Windows Insiders in the release preview ring. So it's already available for testing. And the interesting thing about this update is that if you're already on the uh, May 2019 update, that's version 1903, then this is going to be basically just installed like a monthly cumulative update and a quick reboot and it's done. So it's not a full operating system upgrade like all previous Windows 10 updates have been in the past. Now, it's important to note that only applies if you're currently on version 1903. If you're on a previous version of Windows 10, then this will be a full OS Group upgrade like all previous versions of Windows. Now, how are they able to do this? Why is this uh, technically the case? So basically what they're doing with the version 1909 or the November 2019 update is they're enabling code that is already there, okay? So the new features or the performance enhancements, if you like, are already uh, baked into the 1903 code and the cumulative update that we're going to get in November basically just enables those features, if you like. So it's very quick, it's very easy for people who already have the 1903 update. So how is that going to affect uh, patching for the May and the November update this year? So basically, once the November update has been released, the cumulative updates, so the monthly quality updates, as Microsoft calls them, will be the same for the May and for the November updates, because essentially it's the same OS, it's the same code, okay? So how will it look? So the uh, major build number for the November update is 18363. And as you may be aware, the major build number for the May 2019 update is 18362. So they're just increasing the major build number by one. So what I mean by major build number is the first part of the build number before the point. Now, with the cumulative updates, this is uh, updates updates the minor build numbers, the number that you get after the point. And this will be exactly the same for the May and for the November 2019 updates. So you won't see any difference. So you'll just see basically an increase in the build number of one for the major build number. And as long as you've got the same CU, the same cumulative update installed for the May and the November updates, the minor build number will be exactly the same. Now, if you are a Windows Insider for business customer, I believe this is happening now for the first time, Microsoft will offer you support for any issues that stop you from testing uh, a new feature or any issues that stop you from upgrading. Now, of course, uh, I believe Microsoft is offering this because they don't think that there's going to be any major issues. 
So I think they can offer this to Windows insiders for business customers without any major worry that they're going to be inundated with support. Um, so you do have to be on the Windows uh, Insiders for Business program, not the standard Windows Insiders program, to be able to get that pre-release support. Now, if you're interested in, interested in testing the November update, uh, there are two ways you can do it. As I've already said, you can hop, hop on to the Windows Insiders release preview ring and uh, you can test it that way. And uh, you can also download the update and deploy it using Windows Server Update Services. So you can have a small deployment ring of test devices and actually control how this pre-release version of Windows gets deployed to devices in your production environment for testing. So when are we expecting to see the update? Well, you know, the clue is in the name uh, and we should see this come in November. Um, it'll be an optional update for people who are not using System Center, uh, Configuration Manager and Windows Server Update Services and all that kind of stuff. It will be optional. So you will see something in the uh, Windows Update screen in the Settings app that will allow you to optionally download it and install it if you want or really just enable it as you were, as it were. So you're just kind of enabling those extra features. So. This is going to come in sometime in November. Uh, this is the edition that gets the 30 months of support. So if you're a business, this is probably the release from this year that you're really going to want to have in your environment so you get that support. Uh, it should be more reliable and more stable and more performant than the May update. And it's really you know, what you should be looking to upgrade your devices to. Um, Again, I'll say that, you know, while we're not expecting any major issues with this update, like we've seen with the last few feature updates, because obviously they're full operating system upgrades, so it's a, a much uh, bigger thing. Uh, this time, while there shouldn't be, be many issues, hopefully, it is still something that you need to test. You know, it's not something you can just roll up, uh, roll out, sorry, you know, well, it's a cumulative update. Uh, probably shouldn't uh, have any issues with it. I would advise that you test it like you would any other feature update, of course. But hopefully everything will go smoothly. So it's coming in November. If you decide to roll it out, uh, you can either control it or users can obviously optionally download it if they uh, have the ability to do that in your environment. But what does it actually contain apart from some performance and reliability fixes? So uh, I'll try to put the link to the full list of new features that Microsoft has on its website uh, as part of this webcast. But I'll just go through some of those features for you now. The most important ones and the ones that you're most likely to notice. So first thing is that it enables third party digital assistants to use voice activation over the lock screen. Okay, maybe that's something that's a bit more consumer orientated, but that's something that might be noticeable uh, and useful for, for some people, of course. Uh, one uh, GUI change is that you can now quickly add events to the calendar using the taskbar flyout. So rather than having to open the calendar app, you can actually do that from within the action center itself and add new appointments. So that's pretty nifty. There's a performance enhancement for uh, processors. So CPUs can have multiple favored cores, uh, which Microsoft says is going to offer better performance and reliability. Now, which processors that affects, how it really affects them, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Microsoft not really saying, uh, but you know, it might you know uh, improve performance, uh, and hopefully, it shouldn't make things any worse at least. If you're using Windows on an ARM64 platform, then uh, Windows Defender Credential Guard is now available uh, to use on that processor. So Credential Guard is the virtualization-based security feature which basically protects domain-based credentials uh, when they're held in memory by isolating them from the 
Windows kernel. So if the Windows kernel is actually compromised by a virus or something like that, your domain credentials are protected in a virtual container, and that's what uh, Credential Guard does. That now works on ARM64 platforms. Uh, another interesting thing is if you are using Windows 10 in S mode, so that's the kind of store mode where you can only install applications via the Microsoft Store, you will now be able to deploy legacy Win32 desktop applications to those devices using Microsoft Intune. Okay, so that's something that was not possible before. So that should give organizations more flexibility if they decide that they want to deploy S mode uh, in their organization. And another thing that's going to be really useful for users is now the search box in File Explorer. So when you search for a file, this search is now going to be based uh, on Windows search. So apart from giving you faster uh, search results, one of the advantages of this is that it now, of course, incorporates OneDrive. So for instance, even if you are searching for a file and, I don't know, you have a file that hasn't actually been synced to your device, you will still see that file appear in the uh, search results, uh, which is something that doesn't happen at the moment in File Explorer. So Microsoft is trying to make the search experience more consistent across the Windows GUI, and that's something that's really welcome. I mean, for me, I know quite often I always go on, uh, on and on on these podcasts about, you know, search and the ability to find stuff quickly and the ability to find stuff wherever it happens to be located. I think I previously talked about uh, Microsoft Search and Office 365 and how that's all coming together in uh, the build that's going to be released next year of Windows 10, where you should be able to search for anything wherever it's located across your entire Office 365 tenant. So we're kind of moving towards this place where it just doesn't matter where your stuff is stored. Wherever you search for it, however you search for it, hopefully it should surface in, in your results. And I think that's a really important thing to avoid that frustration of having to think, uh, is it a OneNote note? Is it stored in Outlook somewhere? Uh, is it in a Word document? You know, Where did you store that information? On a, and on what system? Is it local? Is it in the cloud? Do I need to use the search bar in the task in the, in the task bar or the file explorer search box? You know, all these things, you know, users don't want to have to think about that. They just want to search, of course. So this is also a great move forwards, I think. So lots of little tweaks here that, you know, you think, OK, well, it uh, doesn't really amount to very much. But lots of little things there that, you know, especially with the search, uh, you know, and also, you know, the, the performance uh, things with the CPU, if that's going to affect your CPU, you know, all those things come together to make a better experience. So the November 2019 update, this is the one that you should be testing for your environments. Lots of good stuff here. Um, I would recommend that you think about testing it, whether that be using Windows Server Update Services, deploying it to a small pilot ring of devices in your uh, company, or whether you test it on a few devices using the Windows Insider slow preview, uh, sorry, release preview ring. You can do it like that, of course, uh, maybe on a few devices and do it manually. Uh, definitely worth looking at that. So I think that's everything I want to say about the November update. Uh, it's not there yet, so you know, don't hit Windows Update, don't expect to see anything. Uh, you're going to get it in the next few weeks, maybe on Patch Tuesday, maybe before, maybe slightly after, unless Microsoft find a blocking issue. But at the moment it looks like everything is great and we should receive that soon. Okay, so that's it from me for this week, and uh, I'll catch you next week on Windows Business Weekly.